Good world. It's your boy Biz. Um, born and raised California. You know what I mean? So th- this this podcast is my first, you know, um, podcast, man. It's my first episode. This is the, the new seed that I'm growing here, man. And, <laughs> you know, I just want to say thank you, man. Like, you, 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 you really said, like, bro, it's your world, man. You can do what you want to do. And that really said a lot, you know, to me. And I was like, man, I just got to come up with something dope. I got to come up with something sick as a moment. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? And, and I just had to just kind of, it wasn't like, you were like, don't be like that. Just just do you, be yourself. That's it. You know what I mean? And it's going to turn out to be a, a, a great ordeal. And I uh, was up? I got fam tuning in. Okay, okay. Um, but you know this is was so great for me. You know what I mean? Like coming from a world of uh, so many weird places. You know what I mean? Um, I end up, <laughs> I end up like kind of going on these tours and doing all these shows with a lot of people. By the way, you know I play drums for the people you know tuning in and never heard this, and for the you know audience that's gonna look into this later on. Um, you know I'm I'm a drummer. I came, uh, started out in California, you know, uh, South Central, basically. And I was born at a hospital in Linwood called St. Francis. You know, shout out to all the St. Francis babies, you know what I mean? And, uh, (laughs) (laughs) you know what I mean? And um, my mom, you know, came from a rough place and, you know, all that crazy stuff. And then, um, you know, I'll get into that in a few couple episodes later. Yeah, um, but for right now, man, I just want to keep it on a high spirit, you know, keep it on a good, you know, good vibe and, you know, good place. And, uh, you know, I mean, just kind of give you guys something that you really never heard of or whatever, you know, tune in to ask questions or whatever that you want to know, or whatever the case may be. But, um, you know, um, I was looking at a few things on um, on my way here. I was looking at a few things on the Internet and. I saw how, you know, the internet is crazy, man. You can get trapped in. And people be on Facebook just putting out their whole lives, you know what I mean? And I don't understand how they can just, you know, I mean, really ex- ex- just just put so much out there. Like, not knowing that, you know, there are feds and there are, like, you know, all these Cointel Pro programs that are, like, watching all this crazy stuff. But um, watching what you do on on social media, you know what I mean? And... But people just have fun, you know. I just feel like people are having fun with social media and and being themselves and being life and showing their great, you know. What I mean, um, you know, great ordeals that they've done. You know, uh, if you if you've seen my Facebook, I'm I'm posting a lot of myself and family, and I'll post a lot of little controversy shit, and you know what I mean. It it it. Uh, and it kind of touched a lot of, you know, people or whatever. And I'll have, like, I posted a comment before where it was talking about the LGBT community. And there will probably be, I, I, I probably saw about 80 comments on how it was so messed up how I put this post. And I, I was like, you know, it's social media. It's entertainment. You know, why we got to be so, you know, sensitive with it you know it's all having fun <laughs> you know what I mean um and my grand I'm not 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 my grandfather I'm sorry uh my it's like a godfather I would say uh he's a cousin of mine's um but he's a godfather my godfather was full-blown you know he came out full-blown with the whole nails and makeup with the hair and he had braids and all of that like he came out full flamboyant gay, you know, LGBT tranny, you know, and it was okay, you know, I didn't, you know, at 16 years old, you know, my godfather really raised me to be a good person, like, I never saw that from him, so it wasn't an actual, uh, you know what I mean, I didn't say LGBT is a bad community, I mean, I'm, I remember the day that he passed away, right, and we went to the church, it was in Long Beach, and there were all the straight people on one side, who were really just kind of eyeballing uh, the, you know, the transvestites, the, you know, the queers, the, you know, all, you know, that whole crowd. And it was so crazy to me how the people who were straight were just like, they're wrong and they're mean and they're bad people and they're this and that and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you could put the dirty harbor together. 
But uh, I was like, um, that's so mean. Like, that was just the meanest thing. I remember when the the person came up to the stage, it, it was his life partner, you know what I mean? His whole, um, he had a, you know, he, he was gay, so he had a partner, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and so he had um, walked up to the podium, and before this occurred, everybody that was speaking, I mean, who was straight or whatever, they were really knocking it, you know what I mean? They were really getting so mean and bashing him and all this crazy shit. And I'm like, that's crazy. So anyway, in the program, it said that he was his life partner. But he was like, you know what I mean? I wasn't, in, you know, his friend or whatever. I was his everything. I took care of him. I When nobody wanted to take care of him, I did. And not just pure love. So I didn't see anything wrong with that, you know what I mean? Um, and everybody was so abroad about this cat that he was came out that he was gay. I feel like the entertainment on the Facebook realm has to be, you know, considered entertainment. It's not, come on, man. A lot of these people get so sensitive. Don't get, you know, egotistical with the entertainment of this, you know, social media industry. You know, <laughs> it's, you know, it's crazy. If people understood the data, that they have like all their friends. They can set up a little show and have their friends come to their events if they knew how to tap into the, um, getting their data, like getting all their data. I mean, getting like all your friends emails from Facebook, you can get that. You can actually go into your computer Tap into the data. Do some, you know, Google this shit. You know what I mean? Like, Google is everything. <laughs> so, and that's how I find a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? You can actually go in there and tap in and say, hey, I want to find the data to all my friends that's on Facebook. And all the people who follow you on Facebook, you will find out that half of them really ain't your friend. They just kind of just follow you just for the fuck of it. But, you know what I mean? You understand <laughs> that you can invite these people to an event, to a show, to a party to anything that you got going on. But because we don't know, we don't really seek the you know information. We just kind of just put our lives out there. You know what I mean? And people be like scheming on people, like scheming. Just want to know what you got going on just because of the fact that you putting your life out there. Um, I have a couple of people that actually um, really make a lot of money with, you know, Facebook. And <laughs> I'm like, how'd you do that? You know what I mean? Show me that. I mean, how you do that? You know what I mean? But, um, you know, you don't want to be all egotistical and try to, like, embarge on their income and how they making money. You know what I mean? And, you know, you just kind of leave it as that, you know. Um, I post a lot of crazy stuff on Instagram also. Like, I'm a fan of TikTok. If any fans of TikTok out there, y'all go ahead and uh, chime in Gas Mask Tribe. But, um, you know, I am, like, really kind of really sold into the whole world of uh TikTok, you know what I mean? If you go on my TikTok now, you see me doing so many crazy shit that I never thought I could do. Like, <laughs> I'm on there mimicking people, you know what I mean, dancing, you know, tr trying to bust all these little crazy styles or whatever, and I can't, you know what I mean? And which is kind of crazy, you know. But um, into a little something serious, I was watching, you know, speaking of social media, I was watching a... Um, cast of um well not a cast i'm sorry it was really a netflix special and it really like kind of my wife had, had told me about it and i was like i don't want to watch it because i'm in my feelings about it you know what i mean because coming from that world of foster care the you know it's a it's a bad place you know what i mean but you know, this story was kind of really dark and really crazy, and I never wanted to... I was like, I can't start the podcast off with that right now because it's too hard for people. And, you know, talking to you, Phil, you was like, yo, I just want you to be you and kind of just go with your feel. And But that's such a big place for me. I have such a passion. Like, I do a lot of my music uh, coming from that place, you know Right, what I mean? right. Coming from that place of foster care and coming from that dark world and understanding like you, you don't have a family like that in a way of the world of foster care now mm -hmm. I 
grew up with my biological family and things like that or whatever. But I still lived this life of exclusion. Like, I was so excluded from a lot of... And it was crazy because I'm a homebody, period. But I... I'm trying to put this in a way where people can understand it and not be like, what the fuck is he talking about? Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what I'm saying is, me growing up in the foster care system had some great benefits because I was able to get a lot of my drumming. That's how I started playing drums. That's how I started touring the country. But the dark side was I didn't have my mom there. You know what I mean? I didn't have all those good things that it would, you know, make family being feeling so great, you know, and it really messed me up, man. It really messed me up. But I learned how to use music and mask these feelings with music and to learn all these different experiences that I was able to mask. It didn't really come up with these feelings that arise later throughout my life. I didn't come up with them myself. They actually arise and like, yo, we're actually here inside of you. You know what I mean? I'm like, wow, this is some stuff I really got to uncover. So this case with Gabriel Fernandez is something that I really have to, like, you know, do some work on. Like, I don't want to give the people no f false information. Just understand that it's a messed up story. You know what I mean? And I I, I can't do that today. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, tonight. I can't do that tonight. You know what I mean? I have to wait for, you know, a better time. You know what I mean? But <laughs> speaking of time, my time in this industry, music industry, has gone like crazy, uh -huh. right? Has gone crazy, like with the experiences of touring, with the experiences of, uh, you know what I mean, uh, making money and trying to have a family, you know, family, running life and whatever. This podcast was literally meant to like, reach out to those people who are like, man, you know, I really like that guy. You know, he's not a bad dude. And, you know, I, I'm i really good on the stage. Like, I am impeccable on the stage. You know what I mean? So we're no, we, 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 we going to have to bring the drums in, man, and let you just, just this, set up it's, right there. It's too small for that right now. Yeah, yeah, it's too small for that right now. <laughs> too small for that. But I am definitely am a great musician. You know what I mean? I am such, like... I'm dope. Y'all got to come out. The goal was to, like, get 100 people who, like, really, like, yo, I'm going to come out and check him out. He's really dope. Like, I would spend 25 bucks to come see him and support what he do and know that my money is going to something great. Like, people work hard for their money, bro. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, niggas, like, don't get me wrong. People probably think, ah, oh, man, he's probably making money from the podcast. He's probably doing big right now. Big's got a motherfucking podcast. You know what I mean? Um, no, I, I ain't making no money right now from the podcast. Right now. You know? right, right now. Right now. Right now. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? <laughs> I ain't making no money from the podcast right now. So, you know, until we're able to see a huge, like, following from this, you know what I mean? That's when we'll start seeing some c credibility in the financial world. But right. as of right now, it's really to get out to the, the people. The, you know what I mean? Like, I want them to be able to, like, what does he sound like then? If you want to know what I sound like, you can go to uh, YouTube, hashtag uh, Dirty Harvard. Anyway, um, people be like, I want to know what he sound like. You know what I mean? I want to know how he moved throughout like his life. You know what I mean? And I'm very personal, so I kind of mask this shit with like, a comedy experience. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like if you see me on, you know what I mean, on TikTok, I'm in my house with my son. You know what I mean? He's like, you know, running around the house in his diaper and shit. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm like, yo, um, I'm going to go ahead and make some gang of TikTok videos. You know? <laughs> and it's crazy, but as a, you know what I mean, running that, you know what I mean, you would kind of say, well, would he be doing something? I am doing something. I'm doing something productive. I'm showing you a different light of who I am. I'm being comedic. I'm being like who I that, That's me. Like, but you're also wanna, putting in that quality time with your son. Which you know what, critical. my son, like today, if people go to TikTok and see one of my videos, my son is running through the living room, you know. <laughs> he's not naked, is he? <laughs> yeah, he's running, uh, he has a diaper on. Okay, he has a diaper right, on. All right, all he right. He has a diaper on. Right. But, <laughs> but, you know, he's running around the house or whatever, and, and like, I love that guy so much. I ain't never loved 
a dude so much. Like, I feel like when he be punching on me, he punching on me like as if I'm punching on my dad. Like, why you ain't been here my whole life, man? But I'm there, you know what I mean? I'm there. You know, he's only like two. But, you know, I, I just love the fact that you're able to kind of grow something, you know what I mean, that hasn't yeah. been grown before in your DNA. You know what I mean? This, this hasn't been grown. I my family don't have a Kenneth McKenzie, you know, Jr. Right. So I love the fact that I can own that. But running that in the entertainment world, I'm able to now expose that, you know what I mean, and get people to really believe, you know what I mean, and yeah. say, like, you know what, I really, he's a genuine cat, he's real, you know what I mean, he ain't faking the funk, you know what I mean? And um, it's trials and tribulations, you know what I mean? Running, Absolutely. Having a household and you know what I mean with kids and the whole nine, it's 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 a lot of trials and tribulations. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure every father and mother in the world can understand that to this day. Um, but living in LA, you got to be a beast, man. And so me, I've grown so much in LA that I've outgrown LA. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. LA is not. I love LA. This is where I'm from. It's my you know my my place, man. But Everybody hating on each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody hate each other. Yeah, you know I mean? like I was on the road, bro, and I'm on the road with some, you know, me some cats from LA, and I ain't never rode with a black band. I've always been in white bands my whole freaking drumming, touring the country, music industry experience. You know what I mean? Right, right. Always been in like. White band. So what was it like rolling? What was it like rolling with a black band? Talk bruh, to me, bro. Bro, you know what? I, I I I can't. I love I love who we are. Absolutely. I love the melanated skin, but I'm down to make money with white people any day, <laughs> <laughs> all day. You know what I mean? Why? Because it's just a different texture, and I'm not saying like I built this. Like, I'm, I build my thing to only work with white people. No, I'm just saying it's a different texture in business. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, I'm so okay. used to it that I never have to go through. Like, with brothers, I got to go through so much. Like, egos and, you know what I mean? I want to test how strong you are. I want to test your mental. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, in a, I'm on an American tour in America. I mean, we it's a sold-out tour. Right. Sold-out. And I mean, the places are going crazy. And America too is great, but we go to Canada, you know what I mean? And I'm like, bruh, y'all testing me. And it's the little, you know what I mean? Oh, you ain't big enough, little bruh. So anyway, to get people to understand it, <laughs> I'm on tour with some cats. Um, and the guy is from a band of Jurassic Five. And people are like, oh man, you gonna put them out like that? Oh, man, check this out. This is my shit. This is my shit. You know what I mean? But um, he's from a band called Jurassic Five, and I just felt like it was okay because they have a relationship. You get what I mean? They right. have a relationship of fifteen years. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't. That's that's hard to break. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And I understood that from the beginning of getting into that whole culture of. You know, because every band in L.A. have a clique. Okay. Like, people don't know that bands in L.A. are cliques. Like, and then, and that clique might be, like, 50 deep. It might be, like, 3 deep. You know what I mean? But there right. there are different cliques in it. You know what I mean? And having, like, going through... I keep looking at myself on the screen. It's throwing me off. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? <laughs> going through different segments with cats, you know what I mean? And understanding, like... Okay, I look. I understand that I look at you as a mentor, okay. because you are older than me. You know what I mean. You mm -hmm. got twenty years old. You know, in the game. You know what I mean. You've been on the, some of the biggest stages. You know what I mean. Okay, right. cool. I give you that. You know what I mean. But I've done quite as bit or more with my experience. Yeah, you got in the game at eighteen, twenty. You know what I mean. And your homies got in the game at eighteen and twenty. I was in the game at twelve. You know what I mean? Performing on like stages and shit. Actually getting a check. Damn. So people think like, oh man, just because you're performing on the stage means you're getting a check. No. You're a professional once you start getting paid. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? So at the age of 12, I started getting paid as a drummer. And yes, people, at the age of 12, I was only making $10 on a Sunday. 
at a church in Englewood. <laughs> but it's okay. I was a professional. You know what I mean? <laughs> but when I turned like 14, I believe. Yeah, 14. 14 years old, bro. I play at this church at Oasis Christian Center. And this is like, this is like West Angeles, but for white people. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like big. Real big. Right. And I'm like, yo, um, I might have to like, no, you know what? My sister, my sister was like, um, hey, uh, my brother could play drums. And I'm like, damn, why you put me out like that, nigga? You know what I mean? You put me out like that, man? And she was like, no, I got you. He'll be good. So I show up on Sunday. I show up on Saturday, right? Show up on Saturday. Cool. Boom. I play drums. They're like, damn, this little 13-year-old you know, my motherfucker play. Like a professional. <laughs> and, bruh, I did not know that I can make bread at 13. I was making $100 performing, $400. I was going on tour in, uh, uh, with the church and stuff, they, like caps, you know. I'm, I'm, right, they, right. There were many tours, but they were caps. So right. I'm like 14, 15 at these little camps or whatever, and I'm getting a check, you know what I mean, to, to be there. You know right, I mean? right. So at the age of 14, I'm like, wow, this is really good. So I'm used to this lifestyle. So by the time when I get with a band, who is like credible like these cats I'm on tour with in Canada, you know what I mean? I'm like, yo, i am got the experience. I've right. done 250 shows a year for like five years straight before I end up getting with y'all. Right. You know what I mean? I'm experiencing everything. I passed out on the stage before. You know what I mean? I forgot how to play drums on the stage before. Damn. You know what I mean? Like, bruh, bruh, I got like 20 years. You know what I mean? I'm like 20 <laughs> years deep in this shit. You know what I mean? But anyway, and they like 20 years deep. Right? Right. So I'm on the tour and I'm like, cool, this is gonna work out perfect. We ain't Canada, we make international money. I ain't never made international money. I'm like, this is good. So anyway, I'm getting this I'm I'm out here getting this little bread or whatever, and next thing I know, everybody wanna test you. Everybody and this is a brother, you know what I mean? Like these are my these are my I look at them as mentors. You know what I mean? I don't look at them wow. as no like Yeah man, like no networking homies I'm working with. You know what I mean? They ain't network. They, they, they mentors. They right, real right, big cats. Right. I mean, from like, anyway, so we got into, I mean, we got into a big fight. A big fight. And I'm like, man, if I have to like, you know what? I I, I did not want to fight. But it ended up leading to that. Like we was talking about uh, yesterday. Right, right. You know what I mean? It right. ended up leading to that point and I did not want to like, show my anger in a way because I'm so calm. I'm mm -hmm. really calm in a, mm -hmm. in, in a place of like craziness. When it's crazy as hell, I am so freaking calm. You know what I mean? But when somebody's testing your buttons, everybody know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> when a motherfucker testing your buttons and he keep taunting and they keep taunting and you keep letting God handle it. I let God handle it. Right? But they keep taunting. They keep taunting. I let God do it. And we're talking two weeks, three weeks in. You know what I mean? <laughs> How much more that shit you go take? You know what I mean? God said, yeah, watch and pray. You know what I mean? Like, come on. I was in church as a young kid, and at the end of the prayer, uh, uh, Uncle Jesse used to always say, watch and pray. He ended the prayer off of that. You know what I mean? I'm praying. But I'm watching what the hell these motherfuckers, they, they messing with me. I can't, you know what I mean? And they're not saying, yo, we testing your ego. I ain't got no fucking ego. You know what I mean? Well, I don't need no ego. You know what I mean? I don't need it because I'm up under a good umbrella. And these right. cats is like, they, they're monsters in the industry. I mean, I'm hearing stories of Jay Dilla. How Jay Dilla was in the studio working on production and stuff. And, uh... Uh, a B Anthony Brewster is like you know he's you know I mean he out there pushing weight or whatever mm -hmm. but he's a dope he, he's like a god in the industry and they at his out Erica Badu right, right. you know Charlie Tuna you know what I mean all the freaking greats you know what I mean at his house right and this is my mentor who is like a god wow. in the industry you know what I mean and it's crazy how they're not like people don't see that like. They don't, see, and maybe I was a little bit like geeked out at first because every time I saw them, I was like, "Oh man, 
I, I, I really want to be up under your shirt tail, man. Thank you so much for being on this tour. This is so awesome. I really appreciate it. And maybe I had a little more too hype about it. But I was so excited to be in such a good area and learn how what it feels to stay in really good hotels. Right. Man, I was in great ho- I mean, whoo! The hotel game was on. It was nice. You know what I mean? Nice. And in Canada, you know what I mean? And I'm like, cool. I can do this. This is great. I can, ch- I can mingle and like, nah, they got to test you. They have to test your, they have to test who you are. And I didn't understand that. Like, like they want to see, yeah, you had a great American tour, sold out American tour. I did awesome. That was great. But we're going to test you on a, on, a, on a personal level. We're going to see how far you can, anyway. People, I fucked that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's only because I let my anger get to me. Yeah. So, so you didn't pass their test? Hell no. I didn't pass the test from flying letters. They was like, get this nigga up out of here. He gonna kill somebody. I was about to throw this nigga over five flights of stairs. You know what I mean? And it got bad. Like, like, I'm such a humble dude. And I, I'm thinking that it's coming from a place of just love. And it's not from them. Because you can feel a vibe from somebody. Right, right. You know when somebody don't like you and somebody like you. You know what I mean? Who does it? Yeah. A little kid can understand that. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, I'm on the tour, like rolling with these cats, and next thing I know, they want to test my ego. They want to test how I'm, how I, anyway. So we got into it from a joke that I made about the Games of Thrones. And I made a joke saying that the Games of Thrones is just like Laura Farquhar from Shrek. And that wasn't cool. They didn't like that at all. We're not they. <laughs> the, uh, the main cat didn't like that. The main director didn't like that. And I'm thinking that we saw jokes. We've been y- y'all been joking on me the whole freaking tour for like the past three weeks. So I'm thinking it's okay. You know what I mean? But right. anyway, they mm-hmm. didn't. And I felt <clears throat> some type of way because he followed me so much to my all my hotel room. He followed me up. I'm like, bro, we going, bro, we riding up five flights of stairs, and he's following me following me, taunting this, taunting that. And yes, he's drunk. Yes, he's going to Patron or whatever. But that's okay because that's the big homie. That's the big OG. You know what I mean? I understand that. Let the big OG drink. Let him do what he do. But anyway, he kept going. He kept going. And then all of a sudden, Biz end up spazzing out. He said, Biz, you ain't shit. He said, ain't nobody big Biz. Can't nobody be big Biz. And I'm like, it ain't no, I ain't, what you tripping off of? Because I was killing these shows. I was killing these shows. Every time my part came up, I was murdering. I mean, murdering. Anyway, he ended up like, man, you know, you can't do that. That ain't going to be cool. And I'm saying, I don't want to do anything crazy because only thing I see in my brain is me trying to get you off of my shoulder, trying to be little with me. You know what I mean? Like, you're literally pushing me down and keep... I don't want to be around that crowd. This is the experience I got from working with brothers. You know what I mean? I'm going back to people like, well, where does it go back to your brother? Like, this is the experience I got with working with brothers. You know what I mean? I might have had my experiences with white people. I might have had my experiences with Latins. But it was never on this type of topic. Or it was never on this type of situation. You know what I mean? And I really honored these cats. But anyway, I ended up putting my hands on them. I didn't punch them or nothing. I didn't do anything like that. But it ended up getting to a physical altercation. And the only thing shot in my head was, this man is sick, Biz. What are you doing? He's sick, Biz. What are you doing? How you going to just put your hands on this dude? You know what I mean? You can't do that. Mother, you in Canada. You that is, That's capital murder, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't do that. And that what gave it up for me. And I, I take that back so much. Only because of, I didn't have to do that. You know what I mean? But it happens. It happens. I mean, coming from South Central, I mean, what you expect? You know what I mean? But I had some anger to get over. And that's because of coming from foster care and all this crazy world of how my life grew up and whatever. I know a lot of my family members don't understand how, um, how I think. You know what I mean? They don't really see how I really move. And I don't really let them in. 
You know what I mean? Um, I'm hardly probably at a lot of family functions. And it's not because I don't want to be there. You know what I mean? I love them. I love my family to death. You know? But I'm working. I'm trying to get past another plateau in my life. You know what I mean? So I could be able to bless y'all. So I'd be able to bless the world in another place that they never seen. You know what I mean? And anyway. So it got real bad on that tour, man. So I learned, people. I learned. My anger... Is pretty bad in some cases because I have to understand the mental. And that's what, like, this is a good segue for mental, you know, illness. Like, the mental world is so, because of calm, a, a person could be so calm. And you know how they say in fights, don't <clears throat> trust the quiet person? You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. that'd be the person, like, to take you out, like, take you clean out. So I, I, I just had to realize those things, you know what I mean? Just realize how vivid and how vicious that world can be. You know, you don't want it. You in the music industry, you know what I mean? Right. You've been 20 years in the game. You going to let it all go because of this incident? Because, this, you know, this ninja want to, like, say that you ain't, you know what I mean, all of this and you ain't that and you ain't. You going to really let it go? 20 years? <laughs> you neck dick, man? You right here in the game, you know what I mean? The hell? How you gonna live? How you gonna live? You neck deep. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I can't. All right, I, I gotta straighten some up. So what I end up doing for that <laughs> is, I end up finding a way to cope with the anger. While, cause noticing that my anger is not a, I'm not a TikTok person. Like I'm not a a, a ticking time bomb. Like you're not gonna get me randomly on the streets to get into a fight with you. That's not gonna happen. You know what I mean? Only because of I understand that anger. That's an immature anger. I don't have immature anger. I have you fucking with my respect anger. You know what I mean? Like you really messing with my respect. Mm -hmm. And you really testing who my, like who I am. You know what I mean? And we shouldn't have to go there. Like I never had to go through that with a white person. Never. I mean, never. And it's crazy only because of the fact that these are my brothers. Right, right. See what I mean? Yeah, anyways. But I had a lot of great times on tours, people. So so let, let, let me ask tour. you. Great what, times. What was great the, times. What was the biggest tour, meaning crowd-wise? What? Oh, man, that tour, man. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Every night was sold out. So give you the tour experience. Wow. Oh, man, we was killing. I was... Now, there's a segment where I always do my thing for about, like, a good, like minute and a half, two minutes. Right. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. And just to see a drummer rap on the stage and see how the crowd received that is such an amazing applause. Like my guru, you know the cat that I'm talking about, you know what I mean? Yeah, Anthony Brewster, yeah, I still yeah. love you, man. Anthony Brewster, I still love you. Um I love you to the day I die, man. You are like a god. Anyway, so Anthony Brewster was like, bro, why would I bring you on this tour if you weren't capable of doing more? Like, if I needed a drummer, I would just go get a drummer. Right, right. Bro, you rap? You can music that way? You can produce? You can engineer? He's like, you know, I call your music the Beyonce of music. Like, you're the Beyonce for men. Like, not not for men, but as a man, right. you're the Beyonce level. You know what I mean? Right. For women, men. LG. Like, he asked me, what's your crowd base? Like, who comes out to your shows? And I, I was like, man, a lot of lesbians come to my shows. A lot of single women and married women come to my shows. And, you know what I mean? Yeah, they might, you know, dudes will be in there. But, you right. know what I mean? Those are the type of women that, you know, those are the type of people come. He was like, bro, your music is big. And he was just like, I'm not going to bring you on something that's not going to push you forward. And I honor right. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Such a great dude, man. Such a great dude. Even though I had to learn how people will, you will have a fallout with some people. You know what I mean? Right. But they never had a fallout with me because I've always been cool. I'll go five, ten. I'll, I've been knowing these cats for like 10 years, man. This ain't no like, I just met these cats. I've been knowing these right. cats for 10 yeah. years before I start working with them. You know what I mean? But in another sense of, I had to learn the the, the personal world. In the music industry. You know what I mean? Because they want to... Like, when you do business with people, people, when you do business with real people, they don't want to just talk about a contract and all of this. Like, 
they want to know who you are. They're doing business with you. And that's where I end up having to learn, okay, there's a more, there's levels to this shit. You know what I mean? There's yeah. <laughs> different, you know what I mean? Like, you, you got to be able to climb the level mentally. You got to be able to climb the level. And it's like, it's, it's like every time I was able to get to a certain point, it was like I kept knocking myself back, but only because of certain anger issues. You know what I mean? Because wow. they're, they're testing who I am. They're testing if I really got it. Right. They're testing, um, can I, and I'm like, we, we ain't got to go through all that. But anyway, that was the only band. Now, the only band I've ever been in was the um, black band I've ever ever been in was the uh, Charlie Tuna House of Vibe um, band um, featuring Dirty Harvard. And uh, that was the only band that I really, as a black band, got in. But my band, not my band, the band that I've gone, gone in has all been white. And these, and they've have not, there's no racial, you know, issue. It was hard for me to see any racial issue because, yeah, I was the token white guy, I mean, token black guy in the crew or whatever, but, but <laughs> it, it never offended, you know, who I am and it never been racist or whatever. So, so, so what was it like being a token black guy? Man, it wasn't bad. <laughs> it was not bad you know what i mean it was not bad i, I honestly if i saw a black guy around I'm like man what you doing over here <laughs> get about here i'm dying you know but just like for a white person you know what i mean when they've been like when they're the only white person around a gang of black people they've been like you know what i mean what you doing they look at another white person like what you doing here? i'm the only i'm i'm I, I should be with this crew but um, it wasn't bad. There were some things I learned with a cat named, uh, um, damn, I hate to put him out like that, but you know what I mean? Fuck him. I don't like him no more. I do like him. I, I, I don't, don't want to put bad vibes out there, but I do like him, but he got some weird ways and there'll be a long time before we work together. But anyway, it's cat named Andy Frasco I was on tour with and we, we would do countless tours Right, you know what right, I mean? Right. Countless tours. And all the venues that we would go to, bruh, all of them was 90% white. You know what I mean? Oh, but I was serious. so dope. Yeah, but I was so dope as a drummer, you know what I mean, that it didn't matter. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I knew how to play rock. I knew how to play R&B. I knew how to play blues, country, hillbilly. You know, I'm, I, I'm t about maybe 21 at this time, 21, 22 at this time. You know, we're killing on the tours. You know what I mean? And I did that for about maybe five, six years. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, and running that was cool, but we had a lot of altercations. You know what I mean? In a way of like, because we was learning each other. So people think like when you go on tour, that it's just fucking bitches. For, I'm, I'm sorry, loving women and um, getting all this money and seeing all this great lifestyle. Right. Well, I'm here to break that perception, people. It's probably 10% of that. And the rest is just boredom. Because you're doing probably, you're doing half of nothing according to your show. Because you already got the show worked out. You know what I mean? You already have who's coming on the stage at a certain time. You already have who's going to be presenting everything like everything is so set up choreographed right. before the tour hits right that half of your day if you ain't got no radio interview if you ain't got no um pictures or you shooting a video shoot or whatever it's really boredom so wow. being young cats on the road you know what you think young cats gonna do fight you know what i mean box you know what i mean all the little kitty stuff Get you know in some I mean? kind of trouble, huh? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I know there was a uh, movie came out about Motley Crue and how their lifestyle was so crazy. It was like they were just getting coked out. They was tapping women all day. They were like, it was just crazy, crazy shows or whatever. And I was like, wow, that's crazy because it's probably that 10% of the time. You know what I mean? Wow. Because on tour, it's not, you know what I mean? It's not what you think. It's, it's a job. You know what I mean? Like a lot of us have a job. Now everybody run a business different. 
You know what I mean? People think every time yeah. you you an artist, you're you're just like everyone else. No, 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 no. Every Kendrick Lamar is different from Travis Scott for a reason. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, J. Cole is different from Jordan Lucas for a reason. You get what I mean? And yep. that's because of brands. They're different. Now, every tour is run differently. You know what I mean? You're not going to see that on Kendrick's tour. You're not going to see that on the J. Cole tour or whatever the case may be. They're going to just love their fans, get back to their wives, and, you know, get to kicking. You know what I mean? Right, and do right, what they do right. best. But for me, being the token black guy in all these white bands, I was just able to see things different. I wasn't like, I wasn't like every, I didn't see things like every black dude did because majority of people I knew as blacks, they were in L.A., you know what I mean? So I'm everybody I meet is throughout the country, throughout mm-hmm. the U.S., through international, whatever, and they all think freaking different. They don't think like everybody else. You know what I mean? And we're in L.A. So I was like, man, I'm sitting back, and I'm like, man, as a black dude in all these bands, I'm getting paper. They, it's all good. I ain't tripping. But I just did not know how to freaking take my money and put it in a good resource so I could be able to benefit from it. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. I'm making all this dough. I should be able to show some for this. And no. And that's only because of <laughs> not having a professional financial person. See, my family didn't understand how crazy the music industry can really treat you. And I didn't have people by my side that were like, yo, we understand. We know where music can go. Now, I did have musicians in the family. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. I did have musicians in the family. They were dope. Uh, my grandfather was uh, playing for a gentleman's club, and they opened it for, like, Cameo and Earth, Wind & Fire, all mm-hmm. this crazy stuff, right? And they were, you know, dope bands. So my family, my Uncle Robert, he probably performs around here still at the, uh, at the um, on Crenshaw, right? I mean, I'm sorry, on Manchester. Uh, I think it's... <sighs> right here on Manchester and Van Ness. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's uh, it's a little. Oh, the little spot that's right over there off the corner. Yeah, right. Yeah, I know you're talking it's, about. I don't know right the name of it, but I know you're talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, he's, he's not, my family performed. They're all entertainers, right? They're great entertainers, comedians, or whatever, the, you know, you want to call them. But none of them knew how to really hone in to what I was doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm yeah. killing on tour. I'm, like, making all this money on these shows, and nobody's able to help me out to show me how to maneuver my money. I'm, I'm breaking all this paper with these white people and they like, I'm like, how do I maneuver? They looking at me crazy because I don't know how to maneuver my money. Biz, you stay broke because you don't know how to take care of your money. And I'm like, yeah, you probably right about that. Everybody <laughs> in my family was motherfucking hustlers. You know what I mean? Like we was chilling on the coin. We was selling t-shirts and stuff. You know what I mean? On, uh, on, 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 we were selling t-shirts here on Manchester and, uh, uh, what's that? Um, Vermont, Manchester, and Vermont. We were selling mm-hmm. T-shirts out there, Laker T-shirts, and mm-hmm. selling fans and all type of stuff, scooters, and oh, man, y'all <laughs> you know what I mean? Up. Oh man, we was hustlers, but nobody knew how to take care of their money. <laughs> how you do that? So I'm just a little product in the environment that's growing up. I don't know how to take care of my money. So anyway, I get older, and I learn at the age of. 26, 27, you know, I mean, learning, growing older, right. that, bro, you got to take care of your business. You got to take care. You got to lock your business down. You know, all this crazy stuff. And I'm, like, a lot of people that know me personally, they would probably say, man, that biz, man, he's all over the place. And you're right, I am. Like, I am all over the place. That's why it's good to have people around you that understand that and that can be that person. Right. Like, you can't be every guy Right. You can't be the every job person. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You need a person to do production. Luckily, I'm the guy. You need a person to do engineering. I'm the guy. You need a person to book the shows. I'm the guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> you need a person to market your stuff. I'm the guy. You need a person to find that. So you need, like, I've been doing everything myself, Phil. Right. Everything. So I'm like, man, this is garbage. You know what I mean? You need a great support system that who really acknowledge what you're doing and know that it's bigger than you. You know what I mean? Right. It's really bigger than you. And that's something that I really believe in. You know what I mean? Um, Like, right now I have a show in Colorado. Right. May 2nd. Right. 
I booked that. I've been gaming this thing for about like a couple years, man. Couple years on 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 the real on the on the real tip, you know what I mean? Like E40 water, you know what I mean? Right. I'm just on the real, right? I'm like maybe three or four years. I've been trying to get this a person that I knew for so many years of touring in Colorado. I'm trying to get her to see how she can manipulate the industry to her benefit. And it's manipulation is not a bad thing. Right, Everybody right. think manipulation. Ah, oh, you trying to manipulate people to think? No, 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 no. It's yeah. not a bad thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's really a it's really a thing that you can use to your benefit. Like when you book a show, you want people to come. So you want to show your presentation a certain way. Right. When you got people coming to your party, to your little kid's party. You know what I mean? My daughter just turned five. And she's bringing all the little kids from school. You know what I mean? You want, like, you want to present that in a certain way. Yeah. You don't want them to think that Absolutely. it's a 15 and over party. You know what I mean? You're not going to do that. So what I was looking at was how to like maneuver so, you know, you, anyway, people, you just need a great support system. So, all the people out there, if you have people who love you and who love what you do, you can honestly get them to really finance who you are. You know what I mean? And that's something that a lot of people aren't aware of. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a cat from New York. He had, uh, DM'd me, uh, DM me on uh, Instagram. He was like, yo, how do I... You know what I mean? How do I get my thing together, man? How do I promote my thing? How do I get my thing out there? And I say, yo, bro, what you got to do is get 100 people to show up. And we about to go off air, but you need to get 100 got people. Like 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay, cool. You need 100 people to show up to your event. You know what I mean? And to really make it worth it. And I'm like, man, I'm giving all these people this advice. And then what? You know, I'm like, I don't know how to practice my own advice, man. And I said, Biz, you got to channel this thing. Like, a lot of time I talk to myself because a lot of people don't understand that it's a really a mental thing. Like, it's, you guys, your life is, every people, every person that get up and go to work every day, you really don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, you really don't want to do that at all. You know what I mean? And I know right now I'm just ranting and rambling, but you really don't want to, like, you want to do something that you really love. So my job on this show is to inspire you to do what you love, like inspire you to go big. And for me, it's just having a support system, like good people around that knows how to do their job, that can do their job efficiently. You know what I mean? Not on some, oh, yeah, I got some experience in this. I got some experience in that. I don't need nobody for that, man. Right, right. I don't right. need nobody. I need you to know how to do a job very well. You know what I mean? Very well. And that's my ordeal. It's to talk to the people that understands like what I'm speaking. And throughout, there'll be another episode, you know what I mean? We're going to, you know what I mean, talk about more. But, you know what I mean, this is just a platform for me to really talk to you guys, really kind of get you guys to see where my mind is at, how I think, where I move. And I know, you know, tonight I've been really talking about my music and like my experience and how I've been drumming. And so, and, and there's layers to this. Like, you know what I mean? You guys are going to experience so many layers. I'm not a just a one-page person. You know, I do a lot of um, research on a lot of things. Uh, like I spoke earlier, Gabriel, I do a lot of uh, research on, you know, a bunch of Cointel Pro and a bunch of technology stuff. Um, I'll be bringing that also into the show. Um, I have a bunch of, um, you know, tour experience as far as how to get a certain amount of people to help musicians to get to a different place. Um, that's also be something I'll mm -hmm. in interject. I'll be bringing on different guests onto the cast. I mean, I'm sorry, bringing on different guests onto the show. And um, it, that will man manifest itself within a couple of... Uh, <laughs> can't even talk right now. But that, <laughs> that will manifest itself <laughs> into the show within a couple of episodes from now. So, um, really, t tonight, people, I really thank y'all for tuning in, um, you know, for the first episode. Uh, pretty much to everybody, uh, first 10 people that shares this um, live feed, this live podcast tonight, first 10 people that shares this, um, I'll give you free tickets to my show. I'm going to show you why I'm the best. I'm the best at what I do. I'm the best. I'm the best rapper. I'm the best singer. Now I can't. I ain't no more than Brian McKnight. 
Yeah, uh, try to get a nigga singing like Brian Miller, like Maxwell. <laughs> no, I can't do all that uh, falsetto and <laughs> but I'm the best singer. I'm telling you, I am the best singer you ever heard because it's coming from a different place of pain. Like it's it's not a, a a singer you would expect. You know what I mean? A lot of my music really represents like the new album I have called Dark uh, Dark Love, and Dark Love is really me talking on about my love for the music industry. You know what I mean? But in a way, I used a woman in a sense. And these are different true life experiences. Uh, some of them some of them are stories that I've uh, acquired from other people, that I've talked to friends. So there's a real life stories on this album. You know what I mean? And it's be coming soon on, uh, in 2020. But make sure um, you tune in to Beacon Radio um, Thursdays, um, Dirty Harvard Podcast, Biz, and... We definitely gonna give you guys a lot more. Uh, not only that, I've worked with a couple of name acts. I've worked with Grammy Award winners. You know what I mean? As far as um, John Mayer and Ozo Motley and um, all these great people. I got a list right here that I wrote down. A few people. Um, you know what I mean? That I've worked with in the industry. I hate name dropping. I hate name dropping. You hate the name drop. Yeah, man. Like, yeah, I can do Jacob Dylan. I can do all these other great people who I've, you know, me experienced times with, but I ain't name dropping. But tune in Thursdays, people. I love y'all like y'all love me. Gas Mask Radio, Dirty Offer Podcast, and uh, thank you. Hey, thank you, Phil. You know, thank you, man. Yes, I really appreciate you, man. Like you was like, bro, just come on the show and just be you, man. And next show we'll have a. I'll have some crazy topics. There will be some different. On the next show, so don't expect me to just kind of ramble on my experience. But there will be some crazy topics on next show because I have layers, people. I have layers. I am not just one layer. I am like a peanut butter jelly. You know, there's the bread, there's the jelly, there's the peanut butter, there's the bread, and you might get some mayonnaise. And no, I'm joking. That's nasty and shit. That's nasty. Don't do no mayonnaise on a peanut butter jelly sandwich. But uh, thank y'all. Appreciate y'all, man, and stay tuned. 30 Off Podcast on Beacon Radio. Cheer! Yeah. This is for the team, cause we too legit. This is for the ones that we never quit. Never let them see you throw it all away. Get your money up and flip and let it increase. Crazy. How would just to run away? Working on my crap, be famous one day. Now I got a team running in place. Yeah. It's all cash, ain't no Billy J. This is for the ones who say we will make it. This is for the ones who say we will take it. Never let you down, you the real reason. This is a billion dollar smile, never came easy. This is for the ones who say we will make it. This is for the ones who say we will take it. Never let you down, you the real reason. This a billion dollar smile, never came easy. My eyes sitting low, smoking on some cake. She rides sitting low, loading up the tank. Ain't man any hater, make him all the rich. She ain't got no paper, so there is no case. Pay, pay back is a real bitch. I'm an outlaw to the president. Black skin, that's melanin. Yo, girl, love her dick. Ride her out of my London house. Feel good when them tits out. She loves to make love outside. This the life that I dream about. Smoke lungs and my lungs high. Gas mask, this west side. Build a finger to the five. Oh, four hundred years of this black life. Don't matter, my four five. Bone thugs in this two pot. Outcast in this Eminem. Yeah, that's the code that I live by. I would just to run away, working on my craft, be famous one day. Now I got a team running in place. Yeah. It's all cash, ain't no Billy J. This is for the ones who say we will make it. This is for the ones who say we will take it. Never let you down, you the real reason. This a billion dollar smile, never came easy. This is for the ones who say we will make it. This is for the ones who say we will take it. Never let you down.